What's up, everybody? My name is Nick, joined again by my co-host, Matt, and welcome to For Better or Worse. We are back. It's Thursday night football. We're here to talk about it. Um, Matt, do you have a good – how'd your week go last week? Not good. We're going to we're gonna bounce back. Good, good week one, bad week two. You know what sucks is on the plays I had ready on, like, Monday and Tuesday, I was like, these are it. I'm going to go with them. And then by the time Wednesday, Thursday came – I overthought everything. I was like, nah, we're going to change yep. this, change that. Yep. And I got bit by the overthought bug. Um, probably, probably, probably read a little too deep into everything. And uh, the plays, the plays I would have posted on Monday or Tuesday would have done a lot better than the ones I did post. Nonetheless, I uh, still like the way I was seeing some things. Um, I was on the Panthers. They lost to the Giants, but if they don't fumble their first two drives, which you really can't predict, um and their own half yeah they would definitely win that game and they lost on a 56 yard field goal um they gave up six free points basically in the beginning so i did like that look i was definitely wrong on another one um and then hit a prop and then lost another prop that you know i just didn't know what happened there it was a uh, chase edmonds over receptions mm. and they just threw to most dirt instead i don't know why that happened but uh you know we'll figure it out still early still looking at some things now we have more uh you know numbers and more stuff to work with going to week three so i'm pretty confident already posted a couple plays my dog of the week and another play so should be good should be good yeah um thanks for asking about my week as well i never, uh, never. yeah i went six and three in college football that includes the friday fsu <laughs> cover um so we're, we're back on track we're above 500 on the year uh, we're yeah. positive units again. It's looking good. Started looking really good. I, I basically won all my 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock games and then did the opposite for my later games nonetheless. Uh, did some live betting on Sunday. That worked out well. Just, you know, that's a nice thing. About, that's the nice thing about the NFL recently. Like, if you just know where the original line is and you catch some of these teams, I mean, nobody seems to be able to hold a lead. So just bet. Yeah. The huge dog at that point, take the points. And when they come back, you got a plus 16 and you're good to go. You yeah. Know? Like that's just how it seems at this point. No one can hold a lead. Um, and yeah, we all I almost we- lost the Rams in my survivor pool because they almost blew that lead. Yeah. That was, that was the crazy one. Everybody talks about the other ones. If they lost that game, cause I was, I was betting their points. Uh, I, that was one of my live bets. Was yeah. Was over, over 27 and a half. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that was like in the after they had 14 and there was still like eight minutes yeah. left in the second quarter. I was like, that doesn't make any sense, especially versus Falcons defense. And they ended up scoring 21 at half. They scored another touchdown to cash they, early in the third quarter. They won on a uh interception in the end zone. Like they the Falcons almost scored a touchdown. Almost. If Ramsey doesn't pick that off, they probably lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really bad. Um well, that and uh, – but um, they – I mean, they, they were at the one – they should have lost after they, they went to the one-yard line and they – it was first first and goal at the one, and they didn't make it the entire time they kicked a field goal. Like, that's yeah. – you deserve to lose. That's that's losing football right there, okay? That's a good Get point. the one-yard line, prove you're better, smash mouth football, and just pound it into the end zone. But nonetheless, um, we got a lot to talk about. G- I say we talk about this con- – this little series we got going on new segment first, and then we get in the Thursday night game and then the Sunday night. What are your thoughts? I'm down. Okay. Lead the way. So contenders versus pretenders little segment. We're going to start doing. We're choosing all the two and O teams. Let's do some early reactions. Mm-hmm. Um, that probably don't mean anything because it's only week two. So who cares? Um, but nonetheless, let's go through it. Um, we'll just alternate first up the bills. What do you got? I mean, this is simple. Come on. Bills. Um, oh, I'm going to say, no. <laughs> you know what? This is going to be a shocker, a mm-hmm. real shocker. You know what I'm going to say? You like him? Do you like him? I think Josh Allen. Ooh. Oh, here comes. So overly confident, and so am I, because, yeah. Shut up. They're contenders. Yeah, definitely. 
definitely, without a doubt. Come on, uh, give me give me something different, Nick. You think they're gonna? You think they're pretenders or what? No, I, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna be different here. Okay, <laughs> they're <laughs> they're contenders for sure. Um, great defense, great offense. I love the way they're playing. They, I mean, they they're not ru- they're not blitzing anymore. They're changing the way that people are playing defense. Uh, they're just using their front four. They're getting the, the the quarterback, which is the most important thing, and they're dropping everybody else in coverage. It's really unique. They're not blitzing whatsoever. They didn't blitz once versus the Rams, and they got to the quarterback multiple times. Obviously, Von Miller was on a mission, especially versus the Rams team. Um, but, I mean, it's, a, it's really interesting how that's working. Maybe we'll see if it changes throughout the year – with these uh, kind of injuries uh, and and some of this depth, whether it be on the defensive line or in the secondary, and they change up strategies, but I love what they're doing right now. Let's get into something we might disagree on: the Dolphins. You think they're contenders or pretenders? Honestly, so when we were filling this out, I honestly like I think I changed my answer <clears throat> a couple times, and the thing that really bothers me about the Dolphins. It's not really the Dolphins themselves, but it's the fact that the AFC is so good. So it's like you have the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Bills, um, you know, teams in that division of the whole AFC West. Um, You have the Ravens. You have a lot of good teams. You know, I said that in the beginning too, but then the Colts look terrible. So that whole division looks horrible where they could squeeze in. But the extra playoff team, uh, Tua looks amazing. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty easy to look amazing when you have, uh, you yeah. know, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Um, but either way, you can't take, take that away from him. Um, he's definitely producing. That comeback was unbelievable. <sighs> so I'm going to say the Dolphins are a contender. And just for the exact reason that you just explained – I'm thinking that they're a pretender, and here, here's why. It's really Ooh. just who they're playing. I want to be different, number one, so let's put it there. Yeah. Uh, no disrespect to the team whatsoever. I think they're a good football team. I love the way they're playing. Mm-hmm. It's really the division they're in and the teams they're playing. It's not going to be easy. Um, there's there's no easy you know, route for that team. Obviously, I think if they can put some complete games together you know, consistently – from the beginning, not fall behind on these teams, then yeah. you know they might prove me wrong throughout the season. Defense is one thing I had to look at on that team as well. You know, we hear a lot about the offense, but I want to see a little bit more from the defense. But it's really just the, the level of competition that they're going to have to go to in order to really get you know in the playoffs and, and move forward compared to say an NFC team. Um, <clears throat> who I'm skipping over one on the list and going right to. <laughs> It's the Eagles. Eagles. I'm going to go first. I know you have it listed as you first, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, they're a contender, and it's for the exact same reason. I mean, first of all, they're going to win the division. Uh, granted, the Cowboys did get a win, so they're, they're not falling by, too far behind. I'm optimistic, but I'm realistic at the same time, so I'm not going to say that Washington's doing shit and the Giants suck. So – Number one, they're getting in the playoffs. Like, that's happening. And then the way Jalen Hurts is playing, that defense, Darius Slay, I mean, just throughout their, their whole – the whole thing. I mean, they, they have so flat. many weapons. It's, I mean, Jalen Hurts, I love what he's doing with the ball, whether it's running or passing. Um, and then the level of play that, and competition they have to go through in order to reach – you know, the highest level, which is the Super Bowl, it's a little bit easier than some of these AFC teams that yeah. what, what they have to do. If they were in the AFC, they're still a contender. Let's be honest. Uh, the, yeah. the way they play, they're, they're still a contender. But without a doubt, you know, they're in there. Even if they're a little bit lower than you know, notch-wise as far as talent than they are right now, I'd still put them in there just because of the level of play and the people they have to face. What are your opinion on the Eagles? You know, I hate saying this, but, like, uh, I'm going to agree with you as a contender just because I think – so I wrote an article about this and before the season started that they were going to win the division pre-DAC injury. This roster – this roster head-to-toe is the best in the in the division by far, um, offensively and defensively. Um, they may not have, like, big-name talent, 
obviously they do with like AJ Brown and stuff, but like they don't have like, you know, like CD Lamb is like a big name, you know what I mean? Like Saquon Barkley, big name. Um, they don't have these big name jersey seller guys, but like everyone on their team is just a like a dog. Everyone on their team is good. No one on their they have no weaknesses. Um, so they're perfectly sound top to bottom. Um, as a Giants fan, I hate that they're good, but I also like don't hate this team at the same time. I just love the way they're playing. Where normally I would be like, oh, I hate the Eagles, like I hate yeah. Philly, blah, blah, blah. But like, this team is fun to watch. Um, and you know, I I put, you know, my happiness is where my bank account and my my bank rolls on, and I'm gonna bet the Eagles and you know, hopefully, you know, they do some good things and you know, best of luck to them. I said that J- it's up to Jalen Hurts, right? If he plays well, they're they're very serious. If he plays average, they're still a good team, but you know, this is the year where he had to prove himself. And through two weeks, he looks like a bona fide stud. Um, that's all I have to say about that. I know what you're going to say about the Giants. Um, so we're going to go to that next. And while you talk about the Giants, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hear none of it. All right. I'm going to hear none of it. All right. You literally. Go talk. Why? Why do you spend your money on Con- stuff like continue, that? Continue, continue. Number one, we're not going to talk about the Giants because I just told you we skipped over a team. It's the Chiefs, obvious contender. I was sleeping anyway, Nick. I was Pat- sleeping. Oh my god! A team with Patrick Mahomes <laughs> is a team that you know is. A are we just team. saying that the Giants are pretenders? Yeah, we're the Giants are pretenders. They Let's are. Go. You're right. Yeah. We can skip. We can skip. They, they're pretenders. So Chiefs and Bucks are left. They're both <laughs> contenders. It's pretty clear when you have Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady on your team, they're contenders. That being said, the Bucks have some problems already as far as health is concerned. And that's the real question and yeah. concern I have overall. It, you know, I don't like it. The fact that I mean, you got to be healthy. You the Bucks be. are like the Lakers. Like they're like oh, yeah. a bunch of old talent that has big names, but like, they just got to survive the season, you know. Like if AD you. or LeBron gets hurt, like this all crumbles, and that's what we've been seeing. Or if Mike Evans just keeps assaulting people, you know, we don't we don't know. Look, man, that's Tom Brady. That's Tom mm. Brady. I, that's what I want. I want the whole freaking team disqualified from the next game because they beat the shit out of the other team because they even talked to Tom Brady. <laughs> that's what you do for your quarterback, okay? I agree. Um, but yeah, it's really the injury concerns for me that that would only take them out of the contender spot is if they, you know, just aren't able to field a quality team like they have, uh, at least on the roster. So yeah. that is week two, two and zero team so far, contender or pretender. We'll bring this back around midseason at the very <clears throat> latest and kind of update it as we go and, and kind of see where we landed from week two to to the midseason. Uh, break yeah. that being said we have a thursday night football game to talk about it's going to be an absolute shootout it's the steelers versus the browns steelers cool. plus four and a half is the line thank you for yep. pulling up line that's all you're doing uh and the over under is 38 what we think what was it last you seen it 38 last? and a half uh, i got 38 on caesar my god um like i said absolute shootout should be an amazing game especially if you like offense because first of all all prime times games have gone uh, five and zero for the under this makes no sense why it should go over so it's probably going to go over that being said i'm not betting it but that's my <laughs> logic behind it <clears throat> that yeah that's my logic it's so crazy it just might work so i actually wrote an article about this game um which you guys should check out but we're gonna talk about it now as well uh, me and Nick talked about this before the show as well. Um, you got to take the Steelers plus four and a half. You got to. You got to. Like low total primetime divisional game. You get four and a half points on a low total. Like anytime you see a low total, the point is always a, a, a decent play without yep. even reading into it. Um, but reading into it, I mean – no clowny for the Browns. I know there's no TJ Watt for the Steelers. No clowny for the Browns. Possibly no Miles Garrett. Uh, this team looked pretty bad. Uh, they lost to the Jets in heartbreaking fashion, the Browns. Um, the, the Steelers, you know, first game without TJ Watt and, you know, the Patriots. Belichick, Tomlin's always a good one last week. You know, that is what it is. They lost that week. They did beat the Bengals, 
which, you know, is a decent accomplishment. And I think that the Steelers are better than the Browns, personally. Um, if the Steelers were home, this line would obviously be a lot closer to more of a pick em one and a half game. Um, but Steelers plus four and a half on the road, uh, I'll take Mike Tomlin as a dog any day of the week. I, I agree with you. I, I did not, I've been avoiding this game until up until we basically met before this episode. And when you told me the line, I didn't even look at the line. I didn't because I didn't want to. This game is going to be <laughs> disgusting. Um, that being said, I'm obviously going to watch it. It's football. Come on. Um, and you told me it was plus four and a half. I, I mean, I I was flabbergasted. Uh, boom. Throw that. Big word of the day. Flabbergasted. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's got to be the plus four and a half, especially after the Browns blew. I mean, just a heartbreaking <laughs> loss. Up, what, 14 with a minute 24 left in the fourth and you lose the game? That's, I mean, that's impressive. That is impressive. There's no other word for it. Impressive. It was it was bad. Yeah. I can't believe Joe Flacco. Like, we're still watching Joe Flacco, like, win games. What is this? <laughs> well, here's the thing. No one's talking about it because all those other amazing games that were happening. But that's a game that people need to be talking about. How crazy that comeback was. I, you know, with everything else going on, uh, yeah, I get it. But that that game was insane. The amount of time that they had and they came back with the, with with the talent they have, like you don't yeah. have Tyreek Hill to just throw a 90, 90 yard bomb to and score in like three seconds. No, so like you got to do You're the right. Thing. Um, you are spot on. Yeah. This 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 game. Oh, it's it's either going to be really good for us or really bad for us. Mm-hmm. Like like yeah. I just, though, so. I just don't know. Like the Steelers just makes almost too much sense here. It, like, it does, and that's what concerns me. And like the Steelers, the Steelers are ninth in pass DVOA defense, so they defend the pass well. Um, obviously, they did a really good job against the Bengals, forcing Joe Burrow to throw four picks. Should have been five. I think one was like a fumble or something. Um, but the rush defense is 18th, middle of the pack-ish. We know the Browns are going to run the ball. We know Chubb's going to get his, his looks. We know Kareem Hunt's going to get his looks. Um, I know Mike Tomlin's going to try to stabilize that. If you look at last year, the Steelers beat the Browns both times, and both times they held Nick Chubb to like under 80 yards. That's yeah. gonna, He's always going to get his 50 to 80, but if you can yeah. stop him from getting and breaking out in runs and just prolonging possessions, you have a good shot at forcing Jacoby Brissett to throw the ball. And I think that's what that, that's what the game plan is going to be. Um, the Steelers quick. know that they have a good pass defense, and they're just going to they're going to dare Brissett to beat them with the, with his arm. You taking Mayfield or Jacoby Brissett if you had to? I take Mayfield because it's it's high risk, high risk, high reward. Like yeah. Brissett's going to win you eight games, seven games. You had to pick a game right now, last game of the season. Keep your job. Who are you, who are you picking? Say like. On the Browns, same roster, if they have the same roster. Same – same, yeah, it's just – it's Baker Mayfield still with the Browns and it's the Browns and – I think Baker Mayfield is better than Jacoby Brissett. I do. I like I, Jacoby Brissett. Uh, first well, so do I. I don't think he's terrible. But he's kind of like Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. Like, they're, they're average quarterbacks. Like, they're going to – Just two black guys? Is that what you're saying? Oh, my God. No, they're just <laughs> average quarterbacks. Like, they're going to get you – they're going to get the job done, but they're not going to, like, necessarily win you a game. Okay, like, all right. We that's, believe. That's hey, gross. you made um, the kind of comparison, not me. All right. You made the comparison. I'm saying <laughs> you have two guys <laughs> who are – like I think with the uh, Bridgewaters on the Broncos, like you knew they were an 8-9 to nine win team, but he's not going to throw for 350 yards. He's going to he's gonna get, he's gonna manage the game. He's going to do what he can. Um, you know, these guys don't have arms like, you know, like Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, who for some reason people think Lamar doesn't have an arm, which if you watch him throw, the dude could sling it. Um, which I hate that that's like a narrative, you know, Lamar is on his contract his, here. His athleticism is just absolutely off the charts that people like, I mean, it's just so his, his athleticism is so far beyond his passing because it's, you know, it'd be, pa- it's mo- beyond most people's, pa- it's just top level athleticism that just shines over everything that it just kind of like uh, drowns out the passing and everything else. You don't see the spin moves and the running and, you know, yeah. Like, I guess it's true. Plays. 
But the, the bottom line is, but Brissett is gonna he's gonna he's gonna move down the field. He's not gonna throw you know on a rollout across the body for like twenty five yards on a dime. But he'll he'll hit his slot receivers. You know he'll get seven yards. You know he'll he'll pick his spots. They'll run the ball. They'll they'll play a decent offense. He's not gonna turn the ball over too much. So if you're asking me who I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go for the guys that try to win me games. Yeah, Baker may force a throw or two, but he's also going to make some plays. So for me, that's who I'd rather have. Yeah. Well, not a bad decision there, but, you know, you're wrong. But it's cool. <laughs> um, anything else for this game? You got any, like, sneaky props or anything that you want to talk about? Or, oh, okay. Go ahead. I do. You could tell me more about this guy than I probably know about oh, him. George. Old George. Because – he did say, I thought I was open 90% of the time. First of all, every wide receiver thinks they're open 90% okay. of the time. Um, but I do I, think this line is low. He had one catch for 23 yards, week one or two. I forget which week it was. He's had about three targets a game. Um, I do think that with the lack of pass rush and with the defensive guys out like Clowney and possibly Garrett, that Trubisky can – you know, possibly possibly move the ball down with with some good throws, and I think he, he can hit this with one catch. So it's very low. Obviously, they're still building chemistry, um, being with as he's a rookie. But I think he did make that statement. He's gonna throw to him, whether he catches it or not is up to him, or whether they're good throws, not forced throws, is up to him. But they're gonna utilize him, and I think this is very low. I think he could easily get thirty yards. All right. Well, let me talk about it because resident expert here. Obviously, George Pickens went to Georgia. I know him very well. Um, first of all, he never stays healthy. But that's something we don't have to worry about in this game. That's why you didn't see him at Georgia as much. He could never stay healthy. Great talent, great ball skills, very tall, very fat, elusive, I would say. Um, he's just got – he's he's built. I mean, he's got to get a little bit more muscle mass on him to be, like, you know, top-end NFL receiver. But he's got all the skills – and everything necessary at his disposal to become, you know, an NFL number one if he stays healthy. A um, couple things. Number one, if you believed anything from Steelers social media on preseason, you would pick George Pickens as MVP <laughs> of the goddamn league. Everybody yeah. was talking about him. Oh, George Pickens, George Pickens. I said from the beginning, first of all, slow your roll. Second of all, let's see if he makes it through a whole season because he never made it through a whole season at Georgia. Um so you're going to add more games on versus physical, more physical teams, you know, in the NFL, so on and so forth. Like, the dude's not going to make it all season. It's going to take time. 28 and a half yards is low, though. Like, he, he can easily, you know, take you downfield, jump balls, whatever. You just got to throw the ball his way. And that's what I think he means by being open. He might not look mm-hmm. open, but you throw it to, to where he could just reach it, he might still be open because he, he can high point the ball. He's got great ball skills. He makes great catches. He gets separation. He's elusive. He's tall. He was big for the college scene, but you know, on the NFL scene, he's, he's not that big. He's still so big. He's not, he's, big. he's tall. He's just not, he's not DK Metcalf at yeah. all. <laughs> you know, well, he's maybe Gordon Sutton or, you know, like any of these bigger wide receivers, he's kind of in between like a small, He's like a lanky, he's a lanky wide receiver. He's just got to, he's got to just get built, built out. Um, they, I've seen some hype, you know, this, the, this is the kind of stuff that scares me a little bit. I have seen some, we're going to try to get George the ball more. We're going to try to force it to him more, get him some more options. Cause, and that's where the article came out. Like, you know, I'm open more. And then the, in response, oh, we're going to try to get him the ball more, blah, 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 blah. It kind of seems a little trappy, but I also, he could get this in one, two catches easy. So it's like, you know, pick your point. Yeah, he, he's had three targets a game. Um, I do think uh, this is the worst defense he's going up against passing-wise, especially since Clowney's out and possibly no Miles Garrett. Um, like, a little more time. What? You'll get a little bit more time. That's Yeah, like the Bengals have, in my opinion, one of the best defenses in the league. That's what carried their playoff run. Um, and then the Patriots obviously was just a – Slug fast. They they're always gonna have a good defense, um, and you know, and Belichick destroys rookie everything. So um, that was a tough. This I think this is a, this is a breakout game for him. Not saying he's gonna have two hundred yards, but I think this is the game we see him have 
two, three, four catches, 50, 60 yards out of George Pickens. Yeah, I mean, this is the best opportunity of the season so far. So, again, I don't hate it. Um, it I, is a lean. It is a lean. Nothing yeah, official right now. I do like yeah. the guy. Uh, and I hope it cashes. But, you know, at the same time, I'm a little upset with him because I feel like he – I just never got to see the true George Pickens, uh, which is just disappointing at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> You missed the guy in his prime in college. Perfect opportunity to be a wide receiver one. Just never made the field because he wasn't healthy. Um, well, do you want to you want to look ahead to some? Yeah. Let's do it's, it. Is look ahead one word? I don't know. I kind of messed up on the banner, but it is. I guess we could look ahead and see what it is. We'll look ahead. Look ahead. Look ahead. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I posted this play. I love this play, Nick. It's, be, it's minus five on most books now. We're not going to see the four and a half, so I'm just going to change it because it's going to be minus five when this comes out. Um, I don't so, hate it either. Um, I think – I so I hate the Bengals, first of all. There's no bias coming out of here. I think the Bengals got lucky last year in their playoff run. I think they got lucky in the playoffs. I think Joe Burrow's an average quarterback. I've been saying that. You know, people are going to roast me and blah, 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 this take, yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, like – you're talking about a, a if he doesn't make the playoff run last year, we're not talking about that. And he needed a Lamar Jackson to get hurt, so they lost the so that the Ravens didn't make the playoffs. B, the defense forced four turnovers against the Titans in the second round of the playoffs, where the Titans had the ball, tie game, a minute left, and they lost the game because Dan Hill threw a pick. Um, most teams with the ball with a minute left, tie game, you're not losing in regulation, but that's what they did. Well, with Tyne Hill, you're gonna lose. And, the Chiefs, the Chiefs were up 21 points. The defense shut the Chiefs out the entire second half, forced turnovers, um, gave them great field position, and the Bengals won because the Chiefs literally did not score for the next I think it was plus seven, and I cashed out like an idiot that game. Don't remind me. And then the Rams game was just the Rams game. They, it is what it was. The, the, the defense still played outstanding. You know, the, their defense held teams to 19 points in the playoffs. That's outstanding. Um, they have a bunch of weapons. Like, if you give a lot of quarterbacks the weapons the Bengals have, they could probably still produce. That being said, as much of a Bengals hater I am, this is a perfect spot for them to beat the Jets. They're not absolutely okay. terrible. Um, they're 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 a borderline playoff team, um, and the Jets are coming off an emotional comeback. Uh, the Bengals are desperate. They're desperate. They lost their first two games. They need to win this game, uh, and the Jets beat them last year, so they have revenge from last year. And full on desperation this year. Um, I think this this defense is going to force Joe Flacco to uh, have a lot of turnovers, and Joe Burrow is going to you know perform very well. They have too many weapons for this Jets defense. I just think this is a smash spot. Um, I love this spot here. You got to buy low on the Bengals, sell high on the Jets. Love this play. Okay, I don't disagree whatsoever. My question is, how good is the Jets' pass rush? Because that's been that's been the Bengals problem, it, you know, and I don't blame them for taking chase. Obviously. I mean, come on, nobody can say, Hey, you know, chase, you should have picked Penny Sewell over chase. No, at the end of the day, you can, you can get a lot of tackles and guards that, you know, they're not going to be at Penny Sewell's level by no means, but finding a Jamar chase, that's, that's once in a, once in a while. That's something people chase to do. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> um damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up there one day and just beat that ass. Um <laughs> that's a whole nother discussion. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Um this this game is at Jet Stadium. I should we should we should go to a Jets game. Before the season's over, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um we'll do some live content or something. What do you think? Yeah, we should let our, we should ask our fans. We can we do the ask, live. We should ask our fans. Comment below if Nick should come to New York one of these weeks, and we'll find a good game. Yeah, a good game. What do they? Who do they play this week? That'd be like ba- it, the Bengals. Oh, yeah, idiot. It's the Bengals, and then or you can do a Giants game if you want, but I don't know. Uh, I'm good. We'll figure it out. Bottom yeah, lines, we'll figure it out. Nonetheless, um, I feel like that's a discussion we could have had after the show, but we're, we're having it during, so no worries. Sorry. Anything that's else that. you can think of? I mean, is there any trap games coming up that need people need to worry about ahead of time? Yeah. 
I want to talk about this one right here. You can tell me your thoughts. Mm, go. 49ers Broncos. Oh. 49ers opened up as a two and a half point dog. They are now minus one. Um, that's probably where it should be. Mm-hmm. But people are saying 49ers are a lock. This Broncos team, let's be real. If they don't fumble at the one yard line like 74 times this season, they're not 0 and 2. Yeah. Or no, 1 and 1. They beat the Texans. You know, the Texans aren't as bad as people think. Um, this team, if they if they score those goal lines and they're 2 0 going into this, this is a much different story. Yeah. Um, I like Jimmy G, honestly, more than Trey I Lance. Love, I love So him. I think the 49ers are better off. It looked like the players wanted Jimmy G to be out there too when he came out there. But this game is as pick them as it should be. Um, I wouldn't touch this game with a 60 foot pole, personally. I think both rosters are really good. Uh, both quarterbacks are good. This is going to be a, a great game to watch. What do you think? Uh, I agree. First of all, my boy Jimmy, respect. Okay. Taking out porn stars on dinner. I see you. <laughs> That's last year. Who cares, dude? You're G. Um, Jimmy G. <laughs> damn. Um, I honestly love I it's such a trap. You're right. Let's let's get that out of the way right now. I still love it. I love Jimmy G. And I know. The Broncos, wanna... <laughs> I mean, they look so bad right now. So bad. They got the clips of Russell. First of all, Russell Wilson just missing the perfect opportunity for a touch. Run pass. Oh, it's like, yeah, run pass. I was gonna get to that. Runner pass. But it's like high school. I did that in high school. Yeah, peewees. Yeah. Like Hey, fundamentals. When whatever, changes. whatever. Um, but he, he also throwing to <laughs> wide open people in the end zone wins championships too. That's what I've learned. True. Yeah. Thoughts. That's what I've heard. I uh, didn't play in the NFL, so um, True. <laughs> not yet. I still, I, I might fall for it. I might. Me too. I, I said that. Me too. I mean, yeah. I, I, tip, I said this so I could. If I did fall for it, I could post this and say yeah. I told you. You could preemptively like, hey, I did tell you it was a trap, but uh, come on in, you know. I'm uh, more for a good trap. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm all about it, you know, because it's one of those games where you didn't bet it, and you, it's one of those you feel worse that you didn't bet it, and you're like, dude, the line was they win by like thirty, and you're yeah. like, what the fuck? Like, what was I worried about that? this game? You know. <laughs> um. All right, let's wrap this up, baby. We got one more game I want to briefly talk about. It's Packers at Bucks. That seems like the game of the week. Um, yeah, I'm no really- Mike Evans with the suspension. Yeah. Well, that's what you do for your quarterback. Did, I, did we talk about this earlier? That's what yeah, you can do. That's what you do. Just – him and the latter part are never going to gonna be cordial, that's for sure. But yeah. um, nonetheless, what's the line right now? I think it's Bucks minus one and a half, if I'm yep. not mistaken. What are your thoughts on this game? I wouldn't touch this with the 60 foot pole either. Oh, Apparently, God. like there's a there's a narrative where Aaron Rodgers hates playing in Florida. Sucks yeah. in Florida. Don't know how true that is. Um, maybe he just hates warm weather. I don't know. Um, but you know, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, maybe there's a good live spot here, but you got a bunch of injuries on the Packers side. You have a bunch of questionable wide receivers who probably play. Um, but same on the Buck side. So I don't know what this is going to be. Who's going to show their full hand? It's week three. Uh, I don't know. It's I'll, – I'll live bet it if I see something I like. But before the game starts, I'm not touching it. Yeah, maybe live bet after a touchdown or something, you know, and get some points and hope for a comeback. Um, yeah. I don't disagree with you. It's a little weird. I do like the Bucks. I like them a lot more with Mike Evans and not all these injuries. And then the Packers have been a weird team so far this year as well. Um, definitely disappointing overall. But, I mean, you haven't changed much. Like, you lost pieces. And you, I, I don't see how you improved your team. How did the Packers improve their team from last year? They didn't. Okay. Did they win the Super Bowl last year? <clears throat> no. Okay. All right. So, what the fuck are they doing? I don't know. Um Letting Aaron Rodgers die out there. They're just letting him die out there, just like Brett. It's so sad. Um, Except you don't have Mike McCarthy to blame anymore. That was the reason why they didn't win more championships, in my opinion. Although, you could blame uh, 
their coach for their playoff loss last time when they yeah, who was the coach and they went for it or yeah. they didn't go for it. it was, no, they were down by a bunch and yeah, they didn't go for they just kicked a field goal instead. I'm trying to remember exactly. Yeah, but it was something something horrible. It's like give Aaron Rodgers like fourth and three at the goal line or something. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Going for the field goal. There will always be excuses there. Either way, I'm not touching that. I probably lean. I don't even know. I'm not even going to put a lean out there. You, it should we'll be fun. We'll think on it. It should be a fun one to watch, though. Hmm. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, as far as legends of the game, there you go. There's two two great quarterback battles, you know, to go after in this game. Um, just mumbling at this point. It's getting late. So thank you for joining us once again. Matt, we got to talk after. Let's Let's figure out some plans. But I appreciate you guys stopping by. Let us know your thoughts in the comments as to which pick you like. What are your plays for this weekend as well? And then we'll be back on Saturday morning for a college football episode, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We will see you then. Until then, best of luck. Bet responsibly. Deuces. Peace.